right, we're back with another episode here of the Musician Beat, which is our little video podcast featuring musicians from Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony and insights into everything that's going on with all of them around the country. And today we have none other than our principal cellist, Isaac Pastor Chermak. Isaac, I'm so happy you could join us for this. Hey, Jason. Thanks for having me. It's so cool to be here. Yeah, since we can't see each other regularly performing, at least we can hop on a Zoom every once in a while and chit chat, talk oh. shop. <laughs> Always. All right. So, um, you know, for folks who may not know your background, which is very interesting and maybe not typical of every musician in the orchestra, give us just a little quick sketch of where you're coming from and, and kind of how your, your musical world operates in addition to the work you do here with the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. Sure. Well, I am, Jason, I'm joining you from Berkeley, California, uh, right across the water from San Francisco. In fact, if I look above the camera out my window i can see san francisco and the golden gate bridge from my living room here <laughs> it's a different um, view so that, that i have out of, out of my uh window right here i'm looking out on some corn maybe <laughs> <laughs> solid solid um so I, I i'm based here in the san francisco bay area um i play with at last count uh nine different orchestras wow. uh symphonies and opera <laughs> companies um the vast majority of those are here in california um, and then I also get on a plane uh, four to six times a year uh, to join you guys in Iowa, which is some of the most fun that I have, actually. Yeah, you really are a traveler. I mean, I mean, you travel quite a bit for work, and that's a, another interesting element of current day life that we can discuss in a couple minutes. But um, in, a given, in a given year, let's say, a performance season, you know, that tracks along the course of that academic calendar, like how many times are you hopping on a plane to go do a performance over the course of that, of that season? Oh man, it's gotta be 15 to 20 wow. trips ish. The, I guess, I mean, you understand this, but I think maybe a lot of our viewers might not know how symphony world is scheduled in that in the symphony world, our work week is kind of Wednesday through Sunday. So if you're hearing a concert on the weekend, the orchestra is going to start their first rehearsal for that concert on, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday. In other words, I put together just modular blocks, one orchestra after the next from September to May. Um, it's, a, it's a very full schedule. I end up playing about 100 concerts a year. <laughs> That's really amazing. And I think it's, it's testament not just to the fact that you're a traveler, but in terms of managing your career, there's also a whole planning and scheduling and logistics. I mean, there's a huge amount of extra labor, which I've seen you do quite a bit in the past, and that's definitely a part of your work. Of course. Well, very interesting um, background in terms of, you know, your regular performing career, but obviously some of that has been put on hold right now because of everything that's been going on with this pandemic and the huge impact that it's had on musicians and performers and entertainers of all kinds. So before we dive into some projects that, you know, are, are upcoming that we wanted to talk about, um, just speak more broadly about how, how you've transitioned your activity over the last couple of months to accommodate what's going on. Sure. Well, I'll, um, I'll share very briefly first, you know, we, you know, mid-March, I think, we essentially, everything shut down. I had a really unique experience of playing a very small house concert with my piano trio on March 15th, <laughs> a Sunday, the, when the governor had already reduced crowd sizes, I think, to 50, the next morning. <laughs> Uh, Mike County announced a mandatory shelter-in-place ordinance, which remains in place to this day. Yeah. Um, so it was really, it was really a remarkable time back in March to be kind of sliding in under the wire, just learning about what on earth is going on here. Are we going to pull off that tour? Um, which we did, um, and then from there, you know, the remainder of my regular season, you know, mid March through late May. Obviously, all canned. <laughs> uh, most things postponed or canceled. Um, so that led me and a number of friends and colleagues and collaborators to begin exploring how we could offer some musical content, some performance in a way that's high quality, you know, gratifying to the listener um, and has the value of something you purchase a ticket for and something that you go to like you would go to a concert. 
Uh, so uh, my, my girlfriend, Allison, a wonderful pianist, um, she and I did an online concert in mid-April. Mm -hmm. It was remarkably well attended. It was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> um, just, just because we were, we were both learning the technology of how do you broadcast a concert, which I could speak to in more detail, learning how to do online ticketing, and of course, playing a really demanding program of music for cello and piano. Yeah, let's not forget we all have to still perform, even though we have to get through all those other steps. And, and speaking of that, I mean, you've got... You've got yourself a schedule now of a couple concerts you've done over the last few months, and and one in particular this week that's coming up. That these are big concerts, so you're you're doing a lot of musical work. But before we hit that, tell us a little bit more about that technology piece, which is something that's been new to a lot of people. Um, where has the learning curve been steepest, and what what's been a challenge? What's been a gratifying? Give, just give us a little summary of that. Of course. So what um, what we've been doing, what I've been doing. Um, is broadcasting a concert live through YouTube Live. Um, it's essentially for the viewer, for if you, Jason, were going to a concert or if any of our friends were going to a concert, it's really as simple as clicking a YouTube link. It's about the most foolproof broadcast platform on earth because everyone knows how to, broad how to, how to click a YouTube link. On our end, we have, there. I mean, you should see the room when we do a live broadcast. In front of the camera, you know, it's a beautiful, immaculate stage. Behind the camera, it's a, <laughs> it, it's a mess of wires and signs and arrows. This one goes here, that one goes there. Um, to, to tell you very, very briefly, the, actually the, the kind of gestalt of it is quite simple. You take a camcorder or a DSLR, a nice, uh, video camera, you run that into your computer through an adapter, you take a microphone array of any sort, maybe a Zoom handheld mic, an XY condenser mic set, process that, run it into the computer. The big thing is your computer needs to be running a fairly high-speed internet connection, otherwise it's a mess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been a consideration also for us how do we get really high quality results um, and then from there YouTube Live takes all of that package and sends it out into the ether for the audience to watch that's, that's really wonderful I want to ask you do you have any contact at all during the show or before or after with any members of your audience yes it's really fun one of the features of YouTube Live, which it's optional, you can turn it on or off, is a live chat feature along the right-hand sidebar. And in fact, we may have one for this. I know you've used for some of your broadcasts. Um, and it's really fun. People in the audience will say hi to each other. You'll say, oh, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, nice to see you. Um, and then between pieces... Um, us musicians, we can go, you know, we can go approach the computer and kind of see what people are saying and respond to some comments, shout out our friends. Um, I, I tend to wear, you know, fun socks for my concerts. So <laughs> people make fun of what I'm wearing. It's a, it's a good time. It's actually, you would think performing to a camera <laughs> might feel a little strange. It's not as weird as I thought it would be, honestly. Yeah, that's good feedback to hear. I, I feel like I've been getting more and more used to it as well when I speak to the camera that I'm, I'm talking to people and not so much, you know, a, a green light facing at me. So it's a little getting used to it, but then, uh, then you start to roll. So, so you've used this experience now. You, you, you've got a couple concerts under your belt, and now you're doing something this week which is really uniquely ambitious for any instrumentalist. And, of course, it is a mountain that has been climbed many times by all the great cellists and 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 many many uh, musicians who study the music that he wrote for um, solo cello. So tell us a little bit about this musical project you've been working on that you're that you're immersed in during this week. Yeah, of course, Jason. I'll I'll preface it by saying, you know, once my regular season of symphony and opera of the work winds down in May. I spend my summers doing my own creative projects, my own chamber music, solo work, some recording projects, 
and then, you know, camping trips and, you know, all the fun stuff we should do over the summer. So yeah. I feel very lucky that I've been able to preserve my summer schedule uninterrupted exactly as I drew it up, huh. simply moving everything online. Yeah. So I'm actually, you know, I, I, I feel immensely lucky. I speak with my friends and colleagues around the profession and I hear, uh, you know, it's such a bummer. I can't perform. I don't have a lot going on. Um, so I just, I feel so privileged to be able to do everything I said I was going to do this summer and have a normal workload going on. That's really great. I do want to, I do want to point out before you go on to talk about this project that part of that is, is due though, I think to what you've just been talking about, which is your willingness to, to learn the technology and to work with it. I think if you're not willing or able to do that, then naturally you're not going to have as much of an outlet. So that is kudos to you, I think, for making that major effort to get yourself into that position. With, with a great deal of learning curve and a great deal of frustration and many, many four-letter words <laughs> screamed at the computer, you know, three minutes before the concert starts. You mean four-letter words that are not Bach? Is that the ones you're talking about? <laughs> Bach, among others, yes. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so speaking of Bach, since I, you're, you've, you've prompted me so nicely. <laughs> um, you're welcome. The, um, the project that I have queued up for this Friday, and it's actually been queued up for this Friday for about a year and a half now, is a performance of the complete Bach cello suites. Um, I think we all know the Bach cello suites. They are, I think many of us would say, the finest music written for the cello. I think what many of us don't realize is it's actually among the earliest music written for the cello. Um, the cello was only like 40 or 50 years old at that point. So, in a, in a way, cello music has all been downhill since 1725. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Right. Um, and in fact, um, over the course of my career, I've made the Bach cello suites kind of one of my pet projects, uh, performing not just one of them, but all six of them in order on one program. Um, so, in fact, when I do the suites on Friday, this will be the ninth time I've played all six of them. Wow, that's tremendous. Amazing. <laughs> that is great. And, you know, for the audience, I think that's got to be really um, uh, a wonderful experience, too, because, you know, anybody coming to hear you play these pieces isn't coming to hear you sort of traverse it one time, put it away and be done with it. But like you said, I mean, you explained this is a journey that, you know, you've gone on with this music over and over again. What do you think that gives you when you, when you come to a performance like this, what kind of perspective and approach does that offer you? Oh gosh, Jason, absolutely. It's, um, you would, you would think I would say it becomes more comfortable or it becomes easier, right? It does not become more comfortable. <laughs> it does not become easier. What I what I do think and what I've observed over the past you know decade or so playing this enormous two and a half hour if we just consider them one work essentially playing this enormous two and a half hour work and preparing it and living with it um, just a sense of really starting just to scratch the surface of getting into Bach's head. Um, and understanding, you know, this this monumental genius, um, and starting to understand the kind of the rabbit hole of of macro genius and macro, or sorry, beg your pardon, I'm gesturing micro when I'm saying macro, right? Kind of the rabbit hole of oh my god, look at this phrase. I've, I've never thought about this phrase, and look at the way that note connects to that note. Um, and such and such and such. Um, but then also kind of starting to see the big picture of kind of what I call the back doors and the hidden passages between the suites. Um, and if you play them in order, I mean, not only do you get kind of this broadening of scope, right? Number one is like eight to 10 minutes long. Number six is 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. There, it, it's, 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 it's incredible. But you see the way Bach kind of, He'll leave a clue here, and then an hour and a half later, you realize, oh, that's that's interesting. That sounds a lot like that, or that's like that, except it's upside down or something. So I would say just a, a, a really profound appreciation of the genius and hopefully bringing that 
to the listener, right? Yeah. In, in as much as I'm able to. That's amazing. I'm sure listeners will experience that. And for me, some of this music and, and some of the work of these these artists that we go back to again and again, it's like a well that, you know, you, you know, you pull up a bucket, but then there's more and more and more and more. And sometimes the well just goes deeper and deeper. And it's like, you, like you said, it doesn't get easier. It almost gets more intense the more you do these things. And I think that's yeah. going to be something incredible for audiences to experience live with you this week. Um, so, so anything else you want to share about this project? I think if, if I, um, had, um, heard correctly, you've done, you've managed to arrange some, some performances that have been in person and, but the primary thing you're doing really is focusing on the digital, but just tell us a little bit about that. Correct. So tomorrow, um, I'll, I'm going to be giving a performance of the Bach Suites in my backyard for about 10 guests. Um, spread out no fewer than 15 feet apart per group, <laughs> masks required. Um, and, you know, there there are so many things that if you had asked me six months ago, Isaac, do you think you'll ever be measuring distance between <laughs> chairs at a concert? I would have said, Jason, what the heck are you talking about? Knock it off. No way. Um, but th there I was yesterday morning out in my backyard with a roll of colored duct tape and a measuring tape placing my guests appropriately so that everyone can stay safe and enjoy a live performance of the Bach Suites. So that's coming up tomorrow afternoon. The main event, of course, is on Friday, and that's a live broadcast on YouTube Live, uh, just like we've discussed with all the functionality um, that, that we spoke about a few minutes ago. Well, I really want to encourage everybody who catches this video here in the middle of this week to, to, to get a ticket and check out the concert on Friday night. And we're going to put up some additional information on our Facebook page and our email newsletter and stuff, encouraging folks to, to check it out because it really is a wonderful opportunity, not only to hear, like you said, just absolutely monumental musical achievement, but also to get a chance to, to know you as a musician better for those who just know you as our principal cellist and may not have heard you play in a solo setting. This is really a wonderful opportunity. That's right. That's right. Thanks. Yeah. And I think after you're done, you will definitely deserve at least one of those bottles of wine that's on the wall there. Yeah. You'll be, all, you'll be done with the cello over there. You can move over to the wine after this one's done on Friday. Absolutely. <laughs> Isaac, thank you so much for joining us on this Musician Beat uh, uh, episode. And um, we wish you great luck um, and great enjoyment in performing these pieces this week. Well, thank you, Jason. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much.